Greetings! Today we are going to have a look at Gigabyte R9 280 Windforce OC version and also talk about some overclocking and uh, benchmarks in real games as well. At the start, let's have a look what kind of accessories do we get in the box with this graphics card. We have some adapters, a 6 pin to Molex, 8 pin to Molex, and also a mini display to a regular size display port. And of course the crossfire bridge. It's uh, not a long one, so it's a pretty short uh, crossfire bridge. As well as the user guide. Let's open this up and have a look. Uh, nothing fancy, small print. And of course the software. Now let's have a look at the graphics card itself. As you can see it's cooled by three fans from the front and the heatsink is not bad at all. Uh, this is their Windforce heatsink. As you can see it's got three copper pipes running through from this side and also another three over here but it's not uh, it's not a big it's not a big uh, section here. Right, so it's two slot card, so it's not very it's not very wide, but it is quite long. It's 285 millimeters, which is just over 11 inches. So you need to make sure that you have enough room in your case if you're going to put it in. And for the connectivity for the displays, you've got DVI, HDMI, and two mini display ports. At the top we have uh, our connection for the crossfire and for the power an 8 pin plus 6 pin. This, this bracket here is metal. It uh, provides some extra support for the PCB although I, I would have preferred a uh, full metal backplate. As you can see even the PCB here is quite glossy so I can't say that I like that. And also, uh, to, just to mention, this is matte plastic. So this is plastic housing in the matte finish. Also, another thing to point out here at the top is this. I'm sorry, let me just get that a uh, little bit into the focus. We've got here a uh, dual bias switch. So this switch right here, you can flip it and that's your dual bias. You can flip it back and forth uh, as you may require it. Right, so having a look at the back also, we've got uh, this little bracket here. Uh, there are thermal pads underneath, so it's part of cooling VRMs. Basically, it does get really hot. Uh, I've been running some benchmarks and it did get really hot, this part. So that's another thing why I think they should have included full backplate to dissipate that heat uh, properly. It's time to talk some numbers. As you can see, I'm running a benchmark to stress the GPU and see uh, what kind of temperatures we're getting and the fan speed. Uh, but firstly, let's talk about specs. So it is advertised as a 950 base core clock boosting to 1072. As we can see here, that is really the case. And also 5000 megahertz on the memory, uh, which, is, um, which is displayed here as 1250, which you have to uh, multiply by 4 with AMD memory uh, when you're looking in the utilities. So let's talk about what kind of uh, default settings are we having right here. So the temperature is coasting at uh, 56 to 58 degrees and the fan speed is at around 65 percent which is uh, pretty damn high for for a card that is cooled by 
three fans. Right. So, about overclocking now. I found that uh, the most aggressive utility is uh, Subfire's tricks. It also unlocks the voltage, the core voltage. But as you can see here, on the default, it is actually already maxed out, so it doesn't let you go any further than 1.25 volts. But you do have the option to go very high on the uh, core clock and the memory clock as well. But let's have a look at MSI Afterburner. Basically, as you can see the core is jumping up and down, up and down and I found that by simply increasing the power limit you can force it to run at a constant 1072 megahertz which I think it should have been uh, done in the first place um, as a default because you know why have that silly boost when you can run it at 1072 all the time and it's pretty stable but uh, whatever it's you know engineering thought but as for the overclock in MSI I was able to do everything all the way to the right switch everything to the right and it was pretty stable I have stress tested it and uh, didn't run into any problems but as you can see here I've applied it just now and the temperature started rising and uh, the fan speed is rising as well so that's a 73 74 uh, percent with this with the temperature of around 63 64 Celsius bear in mind that it's not hot right now so the summer is not here yet so it will get hotter and as we get into the summer season it will be um, pretty much unbearable I think if you are running at 76 uh, percent fan speed right now in the summertime it will easily be over 80 around 90 percent fan speed if you're running an overclock so don't even think about uh, overclocking it and in the summertime unless you're going to water cool it um, but I don't know should you even water cool this thing I wouldn't right so but it is pretty good at stock speeds as well especially as I said if you uh, if you increase the power limit and make that uh, core uh, boost constant it's not gonna hurt it and uh, it will actually uh, bring the temperatures down and um, it will run nicely so that's not bad that's not bad at all right so this is it for the overclocking and uh, let's have a look at some benchmarks to see more benchmarks and hardware comparisons you can simply subscribe to my channel to stay up to date or search YouTube for FPS Battle and the model of your choice.